Hello there, fellow Reachers. The boys are back in town. It's 2020. Yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year. We certainly didn't, as we were busy working. And as always. Oh, yeah. Always working here at the Extra Reach. Never get time off. So there you go. Um, we got a bit sort of lazy. We were supposed to do 12 shows last year, but um, skip the last two. Too busy. Couldn't be asked. I'm too, yeah, too busy as well. Um, uh, <laughs> so anyway, we've got we've got a, a list of topics for this month's show, um, leading us straight into the modern era of 2020. We've got here uh, quite the scandal. Uh, James Johnson, sex op gone wrong, came out black. Well, I mean... What a way to bring in the new decade, really. Well, yeah, um, exactly. I couldn't believe this. Didn't it happen in November or something? Uh, I believe it did, actually, yeah. That's when he went in for the operation. And obviously from there, he <laughs> came out black. I mean, I don't know. I mean, they must have just misread the uh, the patient file or something, because it's a pretty big difference. Well, yeah, but he looks, he still looks completely fucked. I wonder if he's going to get that changed then, or if the doctors are going to offer him some kind of compensation, or... Well, he's already had a reverse Michael Jackson, so he may as well just have a Michael Jackson. I mean, on the plus side, due to the amount of payout we got from that, he can now afford two proton packs, probably. Exactly. Well, um, we'll leave it with him to claim on that one, I suppose. Uh, we've also got some more Mong news surrounding James, where he's gotten into some more fights on Facebook. Yeah, um, I'm not... I haven't really read into this, but didn't he have a falling out with Ashley McGee? I suppose we'll get that fully covered in just a moment's time. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> just reading that one. Uh, Mole Woman's a terrorist. Uh, and then Mole, Mole Woman's also, a terrorist? <laughs> yeah, we'll explain that a bit later on. Okay. Um, it is uh, very true, though. I mean, yeah. Well, well, you, couldn't, you couldn't make a mistake there, so... <laughs> no, um, definitely. Uh, that's definitely the case, anyway. Um, Ashley McGee might be dead. Um <laughs> Swallowed some, <laughs> swallowed some dodgy Play-Doh or something. Couldn't, couldn't More on that late. <laughs> Had some struggle getting it out, so <laughs> died through constipation, kind of thing. Um, <laughs> annoying, James, annoying James Johnson's still to come as well. Yeah, we've got some great emails from wonderful fans that have trolled James Johnson over the holiday period and then we've also got some lovely fan mail as well from all you reaches out there um, also um, the Tocolo family don't know if you've heard of them quite Tocolo big family Antarctic. yeah quite an Antarctic family quite a cold miserable family um, <laughs> just a bunch of Eskimos I assume yeah we're going to be interviewing them about <laughs> 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 the recent argument with Josh Sullivan, the fitness slash fashion twat on YouTube. Great, and uh, and to wrap things up, we might grab good old Ross Wilcock for a little bit of a sing song. He'll be singing us out today, so we're going out on a high then. So look forward to that. Uh, first, do you want to just? I mean. Yeah, so I think we should really address the uh, the elephant in the room, or the black elephant in this instance in the room. Um, so, James Johnson has two channels and two personalities. And now that personality has just got a whole lot bigger because he is black. He is black as the ace of spades. He is as black as a black hole. I don't know if they're actually black. They're probably, yeah, yeah. Probably. Just just go with that. That's fine. Um, in in short, he's now black. 
Well, I mean, George instantly, George Pancake Taster, he instantly became quite annoyed because he obviously sees it as not very culturally appropriate to his black people. And uh, we've got a very lengthy email from him to cover in the fan mail section about this outrageous description of the black people Ooh. heritage. Ooh, I would not like to be Janet Johnson. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, this has caused quite a bit of controversy. So, um, uh, I believe from what the report was, I think we sent, uh, I think we sent Boris the special yellow person to go and investigate this one. Yeah. Um, it was at Bristol. Was it Bristol um, Infirmary? Yeah. Bristol Infirmary was, uh, was basically involved with this creation, as I'm going to term it for the remainder of this video. So, uh, yeah. they were to blame for obviously making James Johnson, a fat, balding man from Bristol, into a black cross-dressing tranny. I mean, uh, I just don't know how they could have got that wrong. I mean, they're quite intelligent people. They've been to medical school. Yeah. How they've got that wrong. Well, from what Boris uncovered when it came to figuring out what the what the dilemma was, basically it was, uh, as we all know, the NHS is very underfunded at the moment. Yeah. So, apparently, and this, this is obviously going off of what Boris said, so I'd take this one <laughs> with a pinch of salt, but <laughs> supposedly when... When James went in to, uh, to actually have the, uh, the actual <laughs> operation done, where he was going to say goodbye to his Johnson, no pun intended, it turns out, and this is, again, this is the special scoop from Boris, but apparently, because of how underfunded doctors are, they did the operation to make him into... A woman but they also got it a bit confused with another man called Johnson oh god so this man called Johnson I believe he was called Philip Johnson he was right. a white midget <laughs> and he, he wanted to be a black basketball player right so so Boris uncovered that there was a big stock room full of fake tan and, uh, and sharpie pens <laughs> brown sharpie pens <laughs> and so the the doctors clearly got the the wires crossed with which johnson was which and decided to give james not only one operation but two well all i can say is at least he can now afford that uh, proton pack due to the payout he got from that um, mistake. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, apparently that's still ongoing in the courts because obviously he was charged for two operations. Obviously, it might not mean as much now to him because now he it'll just be the black Ghostbuster. I think he wanted to be Bill Murray's character. But, but now he's the one that got no screen time in the second one. Well, it's one no one cares about, really, so... Yeah, just the, the add-on. Is there any point? Well, exactly, is there any point after this? Um, but yeah, so Boris uncovered that the, the reason why the NHS has gone down the toilet in some instances is because they're spending a lot of money on Sharpie pens. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> I said, that? take that with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll have to do some more extensive research into that because Boris is a bit um, mentally subnormal. <laughs> and uh, he looks like a, an old dust rag. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's more intelligent than Janet Johnson, but yeah, nothing behind the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, I think that's enough of that I think we've cleared that up she's now black he's now black whatever I don't know I don't know what pronoun he prefers now other than 
Well, obviously he's black now, so maybe it, maybe it doesn't even matter. No, I mean, would it be appropriate to refer to it as black as that? <laughs> Sorry, that I think that is now black. That is now black. Yeah, I mean, it does sound a bit like <clears throat> some kind of rock song from the eighties, but there you go. Well, that's the Black Janet Johnson controversy covered. We'll have a little bit more on that with George's email later on. Mong news? In terms of Mong news, a um, little bit of arguing going on. Oh, is that between Ashley McGee and Johnson? Not only Ashley McGee and Johnson, but obviously Johnson's got a new little friend. Right. Uh, oh, Stacy Savile. Right. Never heard of her, but she sounds like a prostitute. More or less. Might as well be. <laughs> anyway, the arguments obviously went down. And, um, uh, and Ashley called her an ass kisser. Wow. That's a pretty big insult coming from him. For his little mind, I think it's. Uh, it took him a while, but he got there. Well, someone who probably would pay for that as a service, that I'd say that's quite insulting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, just look at his Twitter if you want to know more about that. Yeah, more about that later. <laughs> 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 next month, probably. We don't have time this month. But yeah, we'll probably have to like cover it next month to, uh, to squeeze in all of this shit. Uh, but yeah, I guess the outcome of that is that he was blocked. Exactly, so Ash, uh, Ash McGee was finally blocked by James. I mean, I don't know really who that's benefiting. Uh, well, I think Ashley McGee, and I've got a screenshot here from one of James's Facebook posts, which actually James removed because he's clearly afraid of the truth, which, funnily enough, Ashley was actually getting on his soapbox to really stick it to the man and <laughs> tell James what what it was all about. Right. Um, um, uh, did you want me to read this one out on air? I mean, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So with this one, uh, James was really brutally destroyed by this very true comment. So right. Ashley writes, just face it, James Johnson, you've got an unhealthy obsession with Ghostbusters. Grow up, dude. You're in your 30s and you still need permission to do stuff by your family. I mean, that's coming from a potato. Exactly. So, with, a, with a little wig. With a little wig, yeah. So he then continues with that insult and says, that's just sad in my opinion. Hashtag sorry, <laughs> not sorry. Well, I mean, I can't say he's wrong. He then continues to say, me and Malcolm, which we all know Malcolm, friend of the podcast, friend of the channel. Malcolm has been quite supportive with Ashley's comments and our arguments as well about this. Right, has, um, has Malcolm been blocked by James, or is that just... I actually think Malcolm blocked James. Brilliant. So, clearly Malcolm's on our side, so good on you, Malcolm. Definitely, and obviously if Malcolm wants to come on the show, slag him off. Yeah, you're more than welcome to come on and, uh, and delve into some past memories with us. Um, but yeah, I guess that's... That's that sort of, um, I guess, James pulled the trigger there. Exactly. Well, uh, Ashley brings Malcolm into it there, saying that they're not attacking him, it's just an opinion, and a right opinion at that. Definitely. I mean, if you're going to put a movie franchise before your friends, you've clearly got issues. You're clearly just a sad little fucking mop. <laughs> anyway, um... He then goes on to say, <laughs> you can't expect everyone you know to share your obsession with Ghostbusters. Clean your ears out 
and maybe then you will listen to what we are trying to say. Well, if I was Ashley, I wouldn't um, take the block into um, to heart because you know he got his just desserts. He's now black. So. Exactly. So what, you tell him to right? clear his ears out. He gets made black by the NHS. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> the revenge was taken medically. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I guess that clears that up. Um, so that's some interesting arguments that have gone on. This Stacey Savile is clearly trying to push some buttons, get on our nerves, that's for sure. Definitely. So, but uh, isn't she, I'm sure she's a tranny as well. She probably is. I think I think Boris has confirmed that her real name was Stephen, but again, take that with a pinch of salt. <laughs> oh. Um anyway, on to the one of the bigger topics. I think this, this is the biggest topic so far. Yeah, one that actually shook the world. I mean uh, I just I can't believe it myself, but um, Mole Woman is a terrorist, guys. Um, she joined the Boko Haram, um, an African terrorist organization. And um, oh, oh, hold on a sec. No, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Go on, what's up? No, sorry, I misread that. Um, no, uh, no, it's, it actually says Mole Woman has Asperger's. I don't know how we. <laughs> how did I misread that? <laughs> Oh, God. Well, anyway, she's got Asperger's. <laughs> so she, she's definitely not a terrorist. Definitely not. I, that couldn't have been more wrong. Sorry about that, everyone. I wonder who wrote <laughs> our prompt here, giving us all this info. I was going to say, actually, she wouldn't have passed the Boko Haram fitness test if there is one. <laughs> well, she is pretty muscly. Really? I thought oh, well, I was fat. Well, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Could someone email in to confirm whether it is fat or muscle, please? If any hitmen out there are willing to take some photos rather than do a hit on this person... If then... anyone that lives near her or anything can just email in, confirm whether she's built like a rugby player or built like a lard ass. Email in. Email in, because we'd love to know. Reach a podcast at gmail dot com. But anyway, yeah, she's she's got um, Asperger's, so she's she's pretty much um, inept at life. Brilliant. Um, I mean, uh, to me, it was obvious anyway. But I mean, I don't know if moles have human. Intelligent? I don't know. I don't well, really. I, I, I'm still focusing on the fact that she apparently can't see, but clearly sees everything. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what it is. I am a bit ignorant here, but um, I, I believe it's like the sixth sense kind of thing. So it's kind of an advantage, kind of. Well, I've heard rumours, and I believe you were speaking about this before to one of our colleagues, but um, it turns out Mole Woman, and this is just a rumour, remember, but it turns out Mole Woman might be able to see through her eyelids. Really? Yeah, so she's been slagging oh, everyone yeah. off for all these years, thinking that we can't, sorry, thinking that she is blind when clearly she's not, you know? Yeah, no, I do remember chatting about that. Um, I think yeah. she's fooling people. 100% transparency in them, in them things. So, yeah, apparently she can just see right through. Like a sunblocker window. See through, can't see in. Um, which puts everyone else at a disadvantage, if anything, so... We don't know whether she's looking or not. Definitely not, and... Honestly, with the Asperger's thing, I don't know if that affects her eyes, but uh, yeah, she's um, she's one talented individual, naturally, um, to be born with, uh, obviously, pretty much x-ray vision, seeing through eye eyelids and all that, and also she's got Asperger's, which is a supernatural power, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> and that has been confirmed by doctors. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have those genetics. <laughs> um, <laughs> and apparently, um, due to her having that superpower ability, she can sit on her ass all day <laughs> and she'll gain strength by doing it. She'll also she'll gain strong. strength by opening loot crates. Definitely, which went out of fashion, dare I say, seven years ago. She's still opening them up. Probably backlogged from seven years ago. Naughty mole. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty mole, go die in a hole. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit. No, that was a bit inappropriate. Man. Uh, no, she's brilliant. Love her. Bear in mind, um, the extra reach doesn't condone bullying. Definitely not. I mean, if anything, she's got more of an advantage. She's bullying us. She's taking the royal piss out of us. <laughs> she really is. Because we I mean, we've asked her to come on the show. She declines. She ignores us. I mean, she's seen for her eyelids. What else is she seeing for? Exactly. I mean, does she actually know what is going on in the world? Well, my woman, if you're out there with you um, with in your whole supernatural hole, powers, yeah, email in. You know what the email. He's up for you. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> another massive headline that shocked, shocked the local communities of um, wherever he lives. <laughs> <laughs> Portsmouth, is it? Yeah. Oh, him, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ashley McGee might be dead. Might, might be dead. By that, we mean he is dead. <laughs> We think. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, we're not, we're about 90% on this story. Um, yeah. It was brought in late last night. I believe it might have been, <laughs> I think this was flown in from Fred Chong in China. Was it really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think Mole Woman handled it. Um, not Mole Woman. I think Mrs. Goggins delivered it to the studio as well so there might have been a game of Chinese whispers going on there exactly well you know what the Chinese are like anyway um, with this particular story it turns out Ashley McGee got some Christmas presents unlike James Johnson <laughs> and um, he unwrapped for Christmas some uh, some lovely Play-Doh well um, Ashley being Ashley he scoffed a lot just et it and now we don't know we don't know what's happening <laughs> with him we've got several reports confirming his demise saying that unfortunately it plugged him up so much he couldn't have a shit and therefore died I mean I've heard that it does clog up the arteries and yeah. it's pretty much instant death really exactly Play-Doh is lethal it really is. I mean, I've just looked up here. It says Play-Doh does contain wheat, so I don't know if to try to make it edible for, like, a kid's thing, but um, it's non-toxic, non-irritating, but it does clog up the bowels. Oh, so right. Unfortunately uh, for Ashley, um, he died of a delayed constipation. Great. Well, uh, if anyone from Play-Doh is listening that wants to email in, maybe offer some condolences for what you've done. I mean, I think it's absolutely awful, Play-Doh, what you've done. Um, he was a happy man, blocked by James, but still happy, still loving life, and now yeah, he's dead. In all honesty, I think when James blocked him, that's essentially when Ashley McGee's life began. Um, well, I'd, <laughs> I'd go one step further and say his life began when he swallowed the Play-Doh. And, and now look at him, Play-Doh. You've killed Ashley McGee. Biggest thrill ever for him. But he loved his Play-Doh, and now look at him. Anyway. Uh, and that's all thanks to your products, Play-Doh, so... 
And if anyone from Play-Doh is listening, we we are openly looking for sponsorships. So email in uh, and we'll, by all means, give away your products for some advertising privileges. Um, on that note, do you want to go on to annoying James Johnson? As always, we do get the obligatory fan mail. And... Uh, yeah. It looks as though over the past three months, annoying James Johnson has been on, is still ongoing. Right. Um, let's check the. Let's check the emails. Yeah. And um, the first one is from Donkey Man of Japan, a brilliant name, um, who commented on James's update video, stating. In what way did this update me? I feel like I was updated before I watched the video. And now I ain't got a clue. You bastard, you zapped my mind, and now I feel like I know nothing. Oh wow, he was really triggered by this video. Yep, and a brilliant comment all the way from Japan. From the donkey man. Anyway, uh, next comment comes from advanced gorilla beast from planet x and he writes i'm watching this video in the year 3021 and it's still shit well that's um very possible to believe <laughs> actually yeah. it's good to know that we're still around in the future <laughs> the, good, the good thing about james's videos is they're timelessly shit so exactly as proven uh, the next one, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, it's from one of them Eskimos in, some, I don't know, somewhere cold, I guess. I don't know how they've received internet. Or... There we go. Uh, oh, he's called Savoy Hikanda, I think. Right, well, he's put, my pet penguin has this to say, fuck, 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 fuck. And I think your head is like a cucumber. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's quite a good observation. We haven't noticed that before. I guess it does look a bit cucumbery if it was fat and... <laughs> Had a bit less hair. Green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on, we have uh, a, a good friend of the podcast, uh, Anthony Gay. Or Brilliant. Also known as Anthony Gray. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's going under the alias of Anthony post hemorrhoid surgery gay. Ah, it's good to know he got that removed then. Exactly. Well, we'll uh, we'll celebrate that later on, I suppose. Uh, after we wrap up the show. As well? uh, I she probably did. Maybe that's how he got them. Maybe they're running the family. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, he writes this <laughs> this video. Gives me more arse ache than the hemorrhoids. Stop, because it's not fair at all. On the other hand, I had a wank yesterday, and now I feel fresh. Well, it's good to see he's uh, <laughs> keeping himself busy. <laughs> at least he's got a hobby. Uh, yeah, exactly. The next one is from Daryl Don, who... I didn't he used to work here... A few years ago? Uh, we had a few Dons. Uh, they were a family of, of uh, basically nudists that wore bread bags on their feet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the same guy, but he's put, um, I will wipe my ginger scrot across your mother's face. <laughs> <laughs> and then he signed that off with, you bald cunt. Well... Again, the observations are uncanny this uh, this episode. <laughs> <They're> really? <laughs> <laughs> another uh, another good friend of the channel, our personal photographer. <laughs> I don't know his real name, but he, he likes to go under the alias of I got you on camera, you got me on film. Brilliant. And he writes, Ching Chong, Ching Chong, Ching Chong, Ching Chong, Ching Chong, Ching Chong, shite video. <laughs> What an elaborate and informative comment that was. Although very racially stereotypical at that, but they, they have it. Well, he highlighted that it was a shit video and, well, 
<laughs> he is Chinese, so he's only slacking himself off. <laughs> Good on him. <laughs> the next one, we've actually had an email. I don't know if this is right, but apparently it's Shower Curtains emailed in. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me if random ornaments are suddenly rising up and suddenly acknowledging that the world is deteriorating because of spastics <laughs> like James Johnson. Well, it's a shower curtain with monkeys on it, so... <laughs> I guess. Brilliant. It says, calm down, lad. That boom up... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> calm down, lad. That boob on your head will pop if you're not careful. Oh, and have a fucking wash, you stink. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a bit of irony since uh, that's coming from a shower curtain. Yeah, I know. Even a shower curtain is telling someone when to get a wash. That person being the disgusting James Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, disgusting people, we've got uh, another emailer called Ethnic Toe Collector. Is that a relation to um, the now deceased <laughs> Ashley McGee? Uh, we'll have to ask him, but I think he is actually black, so maybe not. Right. Anyway, he goes on to say, Bet you got crusty sandals for Xmas, and when is the next video? Looking hmm. forward to thumbing it down. Well, we're all looking forward to that ethnic toe collector. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, be sure to email in when you've done your next thumbing down also uh, Roy Cropper a soap celebrity's emailed in brilliant um, and he simply puts a James on one of his game walkthroughs I used to love this game however after watching this threw it away well with how many times James has played it and it's a bit played out now since he's uploaded it about 20 fucking times to his channel. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And it's good to know that people like Roy Cropper are checking us out <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, our, our last comment comes from Crocking my knocking up your a hocking. Brilliant. Man. And uh, he writes... I tickled my nuts to this and I regretted it. Well, I don't blame you. Keep us, uh, keep us informed of your a knocking, I suppose. Yeah, I don't blame you for regretting it. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise it personally, and I'm no. sure you'd say the same. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, thanks for all of your comments. Uh, but James was very annoyed, and that is the aim, to annoy James Johnson, so keep that up. Exactly. Um, do you think we should pick a winner now, or...? Uh, yeah, let's let's have a little look. Uh, I'll be, I think this the winner of this one should go to the shower curtain, because for a shower curtain, an, an inanimate object to acknowledge James's retardation... It's quite an achievement. I agree. I mean, it's good to know, like I said before, that objects are, are recognising this absurd, absurd world we're living in. If only um, his house would recognise that, maybe it'd fall down. <laughs> maybe so. I mean, maybe that'll happen in the coming episodes. <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> I'd also like to give out two runner-up prizes, if I may. Yeah. Um, so I think Advanced Gorilla Beast from Planet X, I think he definitely deserves uh, a prize, although we probably won't be able to get it to him for the next sort of thousand years or so. <laughs> so um, we'll, uh, we'll email him, just let him know what's going on with that one. And uh, I'd also like to personally thank the Ethnic Toe Collector for getting in touch and and really sort of pushing the boat out with all these thumbs down. <laughs> what What is the prize anyway? Um, we've got a, a variety of prize packs available, funnily enough. We've got um, two Sainsbury's bags and an Asda bag. So I think the Asda bag will go to <laughs> the first prize winner. And um, inside there we've got a laggy band of pens 
from I think last last month that we didn't give out. Yeah. yeah. So they're quite handy, and we've also got um, some toilet roll and a measuring tape. I was going to say um, it would be a bit pointless giving Advanced Gorilla Beast from Planet X his um, prizes anyway, because everything he comes into contact with, he destroys with his laser vision and his mechanical hands. Yeah, so he'd probably not only disintegrate the prizes, but ourselves. So, well, that's a very valid point. So I think what we'll do is we'll retract your Sainsbury's bag advanced gorilla beast from planet x and we'll instead we'll we'll give you this shout out right here right now so shout out to gorilla beast from planet x and, maybe uh, once you've tamed yourself you can have your plastic bag so get get hold of yourself come on um but i think uh, roy cropper should have the other sainsbury's bag yeah, well, he probably collects them, the sad fuck. So, Roy, you've uh, you've earned yourself a Sainsbury's bag, five pence worth of Brilliant. Rent. Fantastic. Well done. Uh, we've also got some general fan mail, if uh, if I'm all right to, to read some of this out. Oh, it depends who it's from. Well, as I mentioned before, we did get quite the angry sort of rant email from George Pancake Taster. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay if George is emailed then, yeah. So, uh, we're, we're quite familiar with George. He's been a friend of ours for a number of years, and personally, I think uh, we should try and get him on the show at some point. Definitely increase the um, diversity of the show. Exactly. Um, so, with that in mind, George is uh, an ethnic man of the black persuasion, and he writes in, Dear Reacher Podcast, my name is George, I am black, and I love pancakes. I have been following your show for a while, and I was informed that you were misinformed. So wow. this isn't looking good. Um, but he, he, <laughs> he carries on to say... Um, I had a word with Boris, the special yellow person, who admittedly has Down syndrome. <laughs> anyway, he thinks James Johnson, brackets, as a woman, Janet Johnson, was given a race change operation. This is not true, and he instead thought it would be funny to send you guys photos of Diane Abbott, the British politician, because she happens to look like a man <laughs> and looks exactly like James with a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry about that, mate. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he goes on to say, I think you should retract your statements, which uh, I'm going to personally retract that now and say that, unfortunately, that was fake news given to us by an unreliable source but we did we, we did paraphrase and say um that, that that it was to be taken with a pinch of salt anyway so it, it's your own fault if you believed it and in defense of said unreliable source he does have down syndrome so exactly so if, if you're going to actually degrade us in a sense, you are picking on someone with mental learning dif uh, difficulties. So Absolutely. So watch yourself there, scum. <laughs> anyway, he says we should apologize on behalf of Boris and fire Boris and hire him instead. Well, again, he's got Down syndrome, so we don't want to be done on any kind of um, diversity, sort of like inequality... Or anything like that, because our podcast just gets shut down there, George. We're, we're sorry about that. So what we uh, what we propose is send in a CV. Let us see what kind of uh, what kind of skills you've got. What, maybe we can help you get out of Sainsbury, stacking the shelves, and um, perhaps we can reposition Boris to uh, mopping up sick. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have any arms and legs so I don't know how he's going to get on with that <laughs> well he sort of squeezes himself out at the end of the day after all the shit he's collected in his sort of furry body well 
I don't, I'm not sure I want to hire Boris. He's the most competent man we've ever hired, and we've hired Gareth Archer in the past. So, I mean, <laughs> get rid of someone of that talent. Yeah. I don't know if you want to throw that away. Anyway, uh, George goes on to say, I love your show. All the best. All, the, all my love, George and my finger puppet, Callum. I, I mean, I don't know if Callum wrote that. Because I don't know if I don't know if George is capable of writing such a well written letter to the honest. I think you're onto something there. He's black. Uh, exactly. So they don't have pens out there. Callum. Oh no, wait, he's, he's here, here, isn't you. he? He's here. Who George is? Yeah, he's in Sainsbury stacking shelves. Oh good. Oh well, it's all it's alright if he's one of the sort of like the ones that have, we've taken in and have sort of learned how to be a human. But, like, if they're living out there, they don't have pens, so they don't know how to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, if he at least can stack shelves, then he's obviously developed from a sort of black man to a black man that can do something. Which is great. <laughs> but anyway, if, uh, if you are listening out there, Callum, email in. Because we'd love to know if it was you that wrote this, <laughs> this letter instead of your your black friend, George. Well, I'm just putting it out there now. I think that Callum is the brains of that operation. I think Callum has been the mastermind behind this for a long time. And that's a finger puppet, George. <laughs> so I think you need to start smarting yourself up. <laughs> Basically, George, mate, you need to grow the fuck up. Stop playing with finger puppets. Stop stacking shelves and read. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for the fan mail anyway. Thank you for the fan mail, George. <laughs> And uh, on that note, I think that's all the fan mail we've got time for for this segment. But uh, we do have a, a wonderful treat for all you reachers out there. We've uh, we have been contacted by a very loving family. Ah, uh, yeah, is this the Eskimos? Yeah. So uh, obviously, we are very very diverse with the range of people that we not only bring onto the show. What with the gays. The disabled, yeah. And now Eskimos. Well, I mean, my opinion of Eskimos, I probably shouldn't shouldn't say because I don't want to offend any of them. But they are, again, educationally rubbish. <laughs> well, well, you say that, but I'd like to challenge that theory. Okay, because how are we going to do that? Well, this is how. This is how I managed to get in touch and arrange this uh, this, this uh, over the call conversation with Mrs. Toklo. Um, right. Basically, Mrs. Toklo, despite being an Eskimo that wears the same little coat every every single day when she goes out fishing, yeah, she actually likes fashion videos, and who better to watch than fashion guru of gays? Josh Sullivan. Wow. Um, I mean, that just confirms my point right there. If she's watching Josh Sullivan, she can't have many brain cells knocking around. Well, you say that, but she is actually, well, was, should I say, a Josh Sullivan fan, turned now into a Josh Sullivan hater, as some commentators have said. Right. So... Uh I've got the comment here. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is if it's alright, I think we should read through and analyze this comment and then bring Mrs. Toklo on for a, a brief conversation about what went into writing this comment. I'm just having a look at this comment for the first time, so maybe I should read through it and um Definitely. Um but we've got the whole Toklo family to credit for here. So we've got Mr. Toklo, Mrs. Toklo, Toklo Jr., which I think is their their son, and yep. their, their pet polar bear, Thick Thick. Is it, <laughs> I'm surprised the polar bear hasn't actually eaten them. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, uh, maybe that's something we can ask her about. I'm just going on the video now, just because... Um, so I've got the comment right here, and uh, is, was this written by Mrs. Toplow then? Uh, it's signed off as from the whole family, but I've been in talks with Mrs. Toklow who said that she was the mastermind behind the comment. Right. Okay. Well, she starts off with, um, can we just bring you back down to earth for one second, Josh? You're supposed to be an influencer inspiring the youth of today. Your original motive and message was to express not what you have by showing off, but what you can live with on a budget, on a realistic income. People turn to you for that kind of inspiration. I really think this gives off the opposite message to that message, that stating point? it really is. Stating the price of your house may seem impressive, but it certainly doesn't help anyone. Yet another point that she makes there. Exactly. It's kind of just rubbing it in the face of everyone who has supported you from the start. Oh, wow. <laughs> Pardon us for saying this, Josh, and we really don't mean this in a horrible way. We actually love you and your channel. Your nice nature is contagious and warming, but you showed your true colors here, and we now think you're a prick. Can regards the Toklo family. <laughs> well, I've changed my mind on Eskimos right now. Yeah, I, I think they are genuinely quite inspiring with words like that. They really are. I guess it's because they're not surrounded by anything. So they've got a lot of time on their hands. But, I mean, yeah, fair play to them. And, uh, yeah, we've got the, as far as I'm aware, the entire Toklo family here on call now, so do you guys really? want to say hello? Do you, do you think they can hear us? Um, it's, I'm not sure. I, I certainly can't hear them. We're, I think we're having some technical issues here. Can you hear that, Stike? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what's going on. No, me neither. Um, Mrs. Toklo? Mrs. Toklo? I'm, every, every now and then I feel like I can hear muffling, but I don't think I can. I think it is just the static. Yeah, uh... Well, uh... I think we're just going to cut this a little bit and, uh, and move on. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's due to the reception. Um, obviously, we're trying to contact them from their igloo in Antarctica, so... Yeah, we're not having much luck, and clearly the signal on their side, that's that's clearly the issue. Well, they're probably um, embracing some kind of so snowstorm or something. Or maybe uh, the pet polar bear Thick Thick decided to maul them all to death and destroy all the transmitters they've got. The dad's probably slipping around the kitchen, trying to cook up some fish. Well, that's all they ever eat. Yeah, and the kids are probably upstairs in in the igloo on an ice rink or something. I don't know. Or watching Pingu. Most likely. I don't know if Eskimos sleep on blocks of ices. Well, either way, we'll, uh, we'll more than likely indulge ourselves in more knowledge about the Eskimos in another episode, but uh, sadly, we've had to cut this interview very, very short to a point where <laughs> well, we're not doing the interview, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess that brings us to the end of the podcast, um, and I guess it is worth a mention as well. It is the one year anniversary of the Reacher podcast. So exactly, that's uh, that's quite an achievement. We did ten shows last year, and yeah. uh, all ten shows will be available to digitally download as a package with some bonus content. Or if you're old school, you can purchase them on uh, on disc. And of course, I would like to thank Lance Anderson, our producer, who. Honestly, he does too much for this um, podcast. He, he edits everything. 
together and just makes it run a lot more smoothly. So well done to Lance Anderson. As our producer, we couldn't ask for anything better. And of course, another person I want to thank is with us right now and he's going to be singing us out, um, Ross Wilcock. Ross Wilcock, everybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. What's up, my guys? I'm gonna fucking sing fucking songs that I fucking 2020 fucking new songs, new fucking hairstyle and that. Fuck you! Right? Boys are back in town. Fucking whole studios in this fucking shit! Right? Alright. Let me just fucking adjust my legs. Guess who just got back today? Same old cunt who's been away. Haven't changed that much. I've still got depression, you know. Right, are you all ready for the chorus? Right, a one, a two, a three, four. Boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. That there's my stepson, Ross, that is. That's my stepson. What? You're my stepson, Ross. I'm fucking no one steps on love. I'm, I'm fucking left. I'm high on life, mate. Oh, God, oh, fucking hell. Oh, what's this fucking karaoke playing? Oh, who's this fucking wimpy fucking ferret? And there's my other stepson, Finley. Come here, you scrawny fucking twat. Oh, fucking oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh! Oh! Oh no! I feel my fucking leg! Got this twat! Until the next podcast, see you all next time. Yeah, um, we'll get this mess cleared up. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next one. See you again, goodbye. Goodbye.